I'm being joined by Oscar Wilde, <laughs> aka Patrick Walsh. You're Thank very, you're very, very welcome. God, thanks for having me. Ah, it's great to see you here, man. Uh, thanks, it's, Paul. You're, you're a familiar face now. This I suppose so. Yeah, second time at this stage. In Se this studio, second time, anyway. but you're still renowned for lunch or dinner with Oscar Wilde on Come Dine with Me. That's right. Yeah, we did that a couple of years ago. The Cavan. But before, Man. before we get into the Oscar Wilde thing, Patrick, just what was that like? What was the selection process like? How did you come to be on Come Dine with Me? Um, actually, it was my sister suggested I go on it. She lives down in um, Selbridge and she suggested because of a kind of slightly eccentric house, mm. like just from your music show there, I'm a bit of a beetle nut. Yeah. And I have a sign outside Sergeant Pepper Way. Brilliant. That's what I call the house. But so that's how we got on. I didn't know any of the contestants, although I believe Colette McGowan would be quite well known in yeah. Cavan. Then Pauline Farrelly, of course. Yes. Another fantastic lady, gorgeous mm. now. Not a bad bone in her body. Not at all. Then Tanya, who was a uh, very arty, very interesting girl. And Tony, who I called my little brother. Yeah. And we all got on pretty well. I look at the girls. There was a bit of bitching going on, which seems to happen then. But it's a very lot. It's, it's like we, we saw it as very short, but that goes on, doesn't it? certainly does. We started filming on the Sunday for about two hours then. Are you told what to do? Are you told, look this way, look that way, beef it up a bit? Yeah, um, yes and no. I'm more, I would have been a lot more familiar to camera than the others because I trained the Gaiety School of Acting. So that was certainly a big advantage to me. I had done some live TV before various chat shows. So I would have had that advantage. So I just used it like I was acting basically, mm. although I was myself, but you know, I just talked away, let it flow, whatever way the conversations went. If they didn't particularly like something or did want to cut something and they may ask to film something again, then you went with that. Um, but that was, could that be during the dinner? Yeah. Because we've all seen that everybody knows the program. Everybody knows Come Dine With Me and you're thinking to yourself, but it's, you know, this, it's, Something going on there. Yeah, th yeah, certainly it can be orchestrated all right. Not so much with me, they let me go. They were very good to me, yeah. let it flow, particularly on my evening, which was the third evening, the Wednesday, uh, dinner with Oscar Wilde. That's on YouTube anyway. Yeah. Just all you have to go is YouTube. Dinner uh, with Oscar Wilde. Yeah, YouTube, uh, come down with me, Oscar yeah. Wilde, and it'll come up. Um, and that went on, God, we were filming till nearly 3 a.m. that night. It was a long, long haul because I had started. Was the wine flowing? Uh, myself and Tony would have drank more wine. Colette didn't drink, Pauline didn't yeah. drink. Tanya had a couple of glasses over the whole evening, but Tony and myself, we started That's at 9 a big crew. Well, is it a big crew in the house with you? Yeah, there would be cameras, lighting, producers, production assistant, uh, director, obviously, as well. So there would have been... Yeah. See, nobody sees that what goes on behind yeah. the thing. There's yeah. a big crowd. And you have to try and be yourself. Exactly, yeah. While all that's going on. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, um, yeah, you'd have your few glasses of wine, you cook away or you do your bit anyway. I was kind of half bullshitting a bit. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. in an okay, a humorous yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was brilliant. It came I would be a great cook, but I came out of yeah. okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's it. You know. And when you got the call, when you got the... So did you audition? Uh, kind of, yeah, they did. They came up and they filmed all right before that. And I believe they had filmed various people around Cavan and Monaghan. Uh, that's what I was told afterwards. So, oh. yeah, I, I would have auditioned. And then it was sent into TV3 because it was originally TV. It went out on TV3, first of oh. all. Um, and then they came back and they said, yeah, we, we want to use you for it. Now, I was the oldest contestant on the show. That didn't bother me because yeah. I'm young at heart anyway. Yes, of course, yeah. In fact, I refuse to grow up sometimes. Yeah. But so that was me. So I was quite content with that. It's been shown nine times now. I know. It's always on. Between Channel 4 and more E4, 4 and more 4. Yeah. 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 It's been shown a lot because it went down quite well. The Cavan Monaghan yeah. one of the Irish ones. They went down well in best. England. Yeah. Really well. Yeah. I have a couple of sisters live over there, one in London and one in Wales. And they saw it and they loved it. Now. Well, you better say hello to them. What's their name? Yeah, Myra and Fiona. Say hello in there. Hi, Myra. Hi, Fiona. 
Myra and Fiona, you yeah. should be proud of this man. We're, getting, we're, getting, we're coming round to Oscar Wilde. Okay. Don't worry, I haven't, I haven't abandoned you. Just because I told people you were coming on. And they said, oh, ask okay. him this, ask him that. Ask right. I said, he's talking about Oscar Wilde. Oh, ask me anything. If I can't answer, I'll give you a politician's answer. <laughs> <laughs> give me a politician's wages. It'll be more yeah. like it. But uh, that's just incredibly fascinating. And then they said, but when it's shown, when mm -hmm. you sign a contract, Obviously, you got some sort of yes, payment. we did, yeah. But did you sign a contract saying, this could be used anywhere in the world, but that's your lot? No, no, well, you just signed a contract yeah. and they have you, really. Yeah, yeah. So they can show it absolutely anywhere. Yeah, they can, yeah. And do. You're in their hands, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's great. It was fantastic, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's a huge show for them. And um, you can. You, I certainly try to use it to my advantage, and it has worked. Yeah. I just wanted some exposure for, for what I do for a living. I used to be a mortgage broker. That business went bust, as everybody knows. Yeah. So I've had to completely reinvent myself again. And you have? And I've written a book. The book about Oscar Wilde, I've also written his life story, the quote book, and I've performed it. And I was in Ashford Castle now last summer for the American tours, which would be Ireland's best castle hotel. Yeah. Niall Rochford commissioned me down there. Fabulous venue. And Oscar Wilde spent some time as a teenager there. And uh, I suppose he was like, really, the Elvis Presley to literature. Of course, and is, and, yeah. is, and is today. Like, Absolutely, you know. yeah. Like the Beatles, um, John Lennon now on the Sgt. Pepper album, uh, Oscar Wilde was right beside John Lennon because he would have been a big hero yeah. to John Lennon. You too made a song about him, Salome. Al Pacino was just on BBC talking about New film, Oscar Salome. Wilde. He's doing Salome on stage. It's the first time for Al Pacino to be back on stage in 30 years, but he didn't realize at first who was this writer. Yeah. And he was describing the way he minces the words together and he was brilliant and whatever. And he says he's fallen in love with Oscar yeah. Wilde. Um, and then uh, the Rolling Stones made a movie about him. Yeah. And I heard your previous guest talking about Keith Richards and yes. I saw the poster when I came in of Keith Richards and the Rolling Stones drug bust. Keith Richards said to Jagger, we'll go in wildly and and we'll go in with the flower because he was known for, he was Ireland's first greatest fashion icon. Flamboyant. The, yeah, the world's really. And um, I'm doing a gig now in Ballyshannon in the Abbey Centre up there on the end of November. And also I have a part for Oscar Wilde's wife is going to play in it as well. Because a lot of people ask, well, what happened to his wife? Yes, yeah, yeah. Now, that's going to be a gala Victorian, even where people are encouraged to come dressed in Victorian dress, similar to the way the guests, my guests, on Come Dine with me. And we've got Noel Cunningham, who I think is Ireland's first real, probably Ireland's greatest dressed man in my yeah, opinion, yeah, yeah. anyway, on TV3. Very smart, yeah. Yeah, he is extremely smart and dandy. And uh, he's very kindly given up his time, and he says he'll introduce me beforehand. Fabulous. Oh, yeah. That's and he is, as I said, a great fashion icon, I think. So all that helps. But did Oscar Wilde, as, as, as you know, from pictures and stuff like that, he was the peacock. Yeah, absolutely. He even said to George Bernard Shaw and William Butler Yeats, look, when you go into an English household or a dinner party and you're Irish, you got to make a statement. And in his case, he, was, he said, make a statement with your clothes. Mm. So, of course, Oscar was way over the top with his knee breeches and his cane or whatever. Um, Shaw, of course, with the plus fours. Yeah. And the monocle then for William Butler Yeats. You see, and you're, 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 you're associating them people there mm. who would be modernist. Mm -hmm. People who think George Bernard Shaw, Yeats and them are uh, modern era. Mm -hmm. And when you think of Oscar Wilde, you think of way back. Yeah. But he wasn't that far back. Yeah, Victorian time, yeah. the 18. He really came to fame. He was, first of all, he was editor of Woman's Own magazine. He then toyed with the idea of becoming a politician. Politicians, there's not a single person in the House of Commons worth painting, yeah. though perhaps a few could do with a little whitewashing. Yeah. <laughs> He's the most quoted man in history, himself yeah. and Shakespeare. Um, he wrote his first play, then Lady Windermere's Fan, his first comedy. He really started to become famous then. He had gone on... Had he a literary from, background? His father, Sir William Wilde, Wild, he was knighted by Queen Victoria. Mm. They lived in number one Merrion Square and his statue opposite the house where he lived from 1855 to 1878 is um, always visited, probably the most visited statue 
in Ireland, you'd see the bus loads of tours opposite the National Gallery yeah. there. And his mother was a brilliant woman. They were quite an extraordinary family. Who was she? Family. Who was she? What's her she, uh, Jane Francesca Wilde, quite a fearsome woman. And she held all these salons in the house. And I was invited culture night two years ago to be best guest speaker in the house. Excellent. Which was a good, a very proud moment for me. And Oscar would have learned a lot from the conversations that were going on there. But she picked the name um, Sparenza, which is an Italian name. And Sparenza means hope. Yes. And hope was for the Irish nation. Yeah. Just after the famine. Like they ten servants, but they'd taken people in after the famine. They were extremely kind people. Yeah. And as I said, his dad, Sir William Wilde, he had founded the Ioneer Hospital in Which Dublin. Still Ford going today, people. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They still use his methods today. He wrote many books. He was then based in Kong, the beautiful Kong in Mayo, where um, Ashford Castle is. As I said, where I've performed yes, there, yeah, the yeah. pre-dinner talks and after dinner down there, mainly for American tourists. Thank God it went down very well. And then you two rehearsed which I think was their best album, Mac Tongue Baby, yeah. in the house down there, which was Sir William, they bought it, or the Edge from U2 bought that house. Um, and th apparently uh, when I was there, the servant squad was there, and Bono likes to write, and you know, Bono, whatever, yeah. lying down to get inspiration, but it was right. That's what I heard anyway. Yeah, good man, Bono. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. And they may... Uh, no bandwagon jumping there, yeah. then. that's unusual. <laughs> yeah. Then, of course, there was Dorian Gray, which All these famous, yeah. famous stories. Yeah, then the importance of being earnest, which was his classic comedy for the time. Yeah. He was really poking fun at Victorian society, yeah. but in a very humorsome way. And there's no doubt he was probably the greatest comic playwright in the history of literature. Without doubt. And, and vilified for his sexuality. Yeah. For, if it was, what would Oscar Wilde think of Ireland today? Really good question you've put me to me there, um, you know, he was the statue. We're, in, we're in an open society that you and I yeah. uh, were not that young, but we're not that old, but not that yeah. long ago. Yeah, he went to jail for being homosexual. What? what? He you got know, two years hard labor for being a homosexual. And the judge said at the time it was the um, uh, he wished he could have, you know, sentenced him to a longer, but the law didn't allow him. In fact, the judge himself was homosexual. It was very hypocritical society. Um, and then, of course, prison. Hence the law is an ass. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. You know, it's so wrong because yeah. the, the fantastic modern society we live in, it's not completely au fait at the moment, but it's getting there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Ireland has turned on its head. Yeah, like he, he married Constance uh, Wilde. She was a brilliant, loyal wife to him. Mm -hmm. They created a beautiful home. William Butler Yeats stayed there as a student. Saw Oscar as being very happy with his wife. He had two boys, Cyril and Vivian. Very sad then what happened to Constance. She had no idea. He then fell in love with a much younger man, 22 year old Lord Alfred Douglas. Yeah. Or Bosey, as they the call him. Uh, the the Mar correct, yeah. yeah. The Marcus of Queensbury's son, who was the creator of the rules of boxing. But in Dublin, you hear the term Bowsey. The, the whole thing is, the whole thing is, 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 is like a sitcom, isn't it, really? Yeah. If you were, if you were going to sit down and write this story, you'd say, oh, it's a bit too far-fetched. Yeah. But it's not. It's all true. And even afterwards, when he died, I've been in the room now where he died, it's a hotel in Saint-Germain in Paris. It's called El Hotel now, and the Rolling Stones have stayed there. Mm -hmm. But And I've been in the room, and you can see his bill on the wall where he couldn't pay his bill. He had to rely on the charity of friends. And How did that happen, Patrick? Here you have the most <coughs> successful... Writer, poet, author. Yeah, most everything. famous man in the world. In the world. At the time, yeah. And it went from there to taking the Marcus of Queensbury to court, which was a mistake. He had left a calling card in Oscar's club, stayed to Oscar while posing as a sodomite. Bosey, his son, had a hatred for his father. He said, Oscar, you have him now. You have him. Take the Bowsey, yeah. That's yeah. where the... The Bows where the Dubliners use. Mm. Ah, he's a bloody Bowsey. Bowsey that yeah. That's where that came from. And um, took him to court. Shaw pleaded with him not to. The case was dropped. Sir George Bernard Shaw. Yeah. So all these people are, people are characters in this. Yeah. 
George Bernard Shaw said to uh, said that Oscar Wilde, all his work was due to the influence of Oscar Wilde. Mm. Um, they were they were very influenced by him. So they had a boat ready for him. There was no extradition in those days. So this would have been 1897 uh, to go to Calais. But Oscar's mother said, don't you stand up and you fight the English. And Oscar said, my fight is against English hypocrisy. Mm. Trial was uh, Edward Carson was the prosecutor. From Belfast? Yeah. Going the man outside Stormont? They were buddies. This in, man? Yes. They were buddies in Trinity College. So, as you said, the story it just keeps developing and it goes on. And he said when he heard Edward Car Carson would be prosecuting, he said, oh, we'll perform his duties with all the bitterness of an old friend. Carson later said he regretted taking that case on. But anyway, it was Edward Carson then. Second trial uh, collapsed. Marcus Queensby had all these rent boys lined up because he was introduced to male brothels by Bowsey as I call him. Yeah. And uh, this was all new to Oscar. He described it as like feasting with panthers. So he ended up the second trial. Uh, they couldn't reach uh, a verdict. So it was a third trial. So I guess it's tragedy in three acts. And then he was found guilty of gross indecency and sentenced to two years hard labor. In Reading. Yeah, he wrote then after that the Ballad of Reading Jail, which was his last piece of writing. He signed at C33, which was his prison number. But everybody knew. How old was he at this stage? He would have been, he was, he was born in, in uh, 1854 and he died in 1900. So, 1897, So he was uh, 44 yeah. at this age. Um, he wrote that. It was his last piece of writing. Never got to see his children again, stripped of literally everything. Um, taken to the bankruptcy court while he was in jail. People spat at him, laughed at him at the train station. Hank this is the most famous man in the world. Was, yeah. And went from that. But he was an extremely kind man, as I said earlier in the interview, where you asked me about his parents and his dad found the Iron Ear Hospital. He was extremely kind. He was very upset about a little girl. Now, I'm a dad. I've, I'm separated, but I have an eight-year-old daughter. Yeah. And um, there was a little girl. She was aged about five or six. And she was wailing in her cell. And he was very upset by this. So he started a campaign of two very long letters he sent to the Daily Chronicle and uh, in, for to have children pardoned from going to jail, which and now he was personally. Why was she in jail? For maybe robbing a piece of bread or something yeah, yeah, like something that. Something very trivial. And these unintelligent, foolish magistrates, just because they're educated doesn't yeah. mean they're intelligent people. Yeah. But. Um, and they, of course, I'll send it to you, that'll put manners on them and all this, which, of course, was wrong. Yeah. And he had those laws changed. Now, remember, he was persona non grata at that stage, oh. but he did. And uh, Battle of the Reading Jail was about the cruelty of prison life and about a man who'd killed his wife in a crime of passion. He did not wear his scarlet coat, for blood and wine are red, and blood and wine were on his hands when they found him with the dead the poor dead woman whom he loved and murdered in her bed. Now it goes on, mm. once read, never forgotten. Fantastic. It's mm. an incredible story, isn't it? Yeah. And like most modern day icons, mm -hmm. it was after his passing, after his death, mm -hmm. he became this. It all exploded again. You just okay. couldn't forget. He wrote a very long letter in prison called De Profundus which it's a Greek word, it comes from the depth of the soul. So they didn't break his spirit? No, they thought they would, but they didn't. He fell in prison and got an ear infection, and that's what eventually killed him on the treadmill. But he wrote De Profundis, and he, it was about his downfall, what happened to falling in love with a man who had this hatred for his father, and he was the scapegoat, really. Mm. And uh, it explains downfall, but he wrote two copies, because he said if one was given to bows, he'd throw it into the fire which he did, but he had another copy which he gave to a very loyal friend of his called Robert Ross. And it was given to the British Museum, but he left strict instructions for it not to be published until 50 years after his death. Brilliant. And it explains his downfall. He talks about Jesus Christ. Some people called him a Christ-like figure. Winston Churchill always wanted to meet him. Prince of Wales said not to have met Oscar Wilde was not to be known. 
Nelson Mandela said what kept him going in prison was the Oscar Wilde quote, we are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. Mm. Very famous one, of course. Um, and all his, all his quotes, all the Oscar Wilde, you get them. There's nothing, yeah. yes. there's nothing clever that you don't have to think. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not arty farty. It's this yeah. is what it is. Yeah, but sometimes you have to take it in a bit, let it, let it sink in. But I, I produced for the centenary of his death, which was in 1900. The book there, I gave you the, the world's favourite hundred yeah. quotes. Um, and then I did the book on his life. But the quotes are all taken from Dorian Gray to a lot of his plays. And actresses love Oscar Wilde because he wrote great parts for women actresses, which they find it difficult to get now. Yeah. And all about gossip and all that and beautiful gowns and very theatrical. Of oh, course, yeah, very, very. You know. Yeah. But Patrick, that brings us to you now. Right. And you're doing. I like to do all the talking myself. Yeah. It's one of my greatest pleasures. Yeah. I often have long conversations all by myself. And sometimes I am so clever. I don't understand a single word yeah. of what I've been saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't wait for tomorrow, really. Yeah, you're doing, but you're doing a couple of shows now. Yeah, I'm doing in Kells Theatre, John Grant. He runs a lovely... Now, if you want to just look into the camera okay. there, it makes it. Um, John Grant in the Kells Theatre at 8pm uh, on Saturday, the 1st of November. That's the life of Oscar Wilde. Admission is €10. Euro. I've the book. DVD of his life, it's reduced to five euro on the night as well. Then in Bally Shannon, as I said, Noel Cunningham from TV3, very kindly, is giving up some of his time to introduce the show. That'll be a gala Victorian evening. We have a surprise actress playing Oscar Wilde's wife that night as well, explaining her downfall. And that's on, on the website anyway, which is um, the Abbey Theatre or the Abbey Centre, I should say, in Ballyshannon, Saturday, oh. 29th of November at 8pm. What's your website? It's Facebook Oscar Wilde Genius. So it's Oscar Wilde with the E, Facebook Oscar Wilde Genius. And you'll see events going up all the time on that anyway. Mm. Well, we, we'll keep an eye out for that. But we're okay. going to do an in-depth with Patrick at a later date. Now, time has gone against us because we want to sure. talk on and want to do a really special on this, right? I'm going to invite you back in again. Okay. But finally, we've had a few people contact us now. Oscar Wilde's family now. Oscar, very good question. Oscar. 2014. All right. Oscar Wilde's family now. There was two boys, Cyril and Vivian. They didn't get to see each other for about a year after. They fought in the First World War which is very appropriate, mm. 2014. And very sadly, the younger of the sons, Cyril, was killed by a sniper. But Vivian was only 100 yards away from him, although he didn't know it was a brother. The story continues. It never ends. They went up before that. The royal family in Monaco looked after the two little boys for a while. They had to go to rented rooms. So that's to answer that question. So that was a good question. Are there, are there relatives alive today? Yes. His grandson, who I've been in touch with on and off, haven't been in touch with for a while, called Vivian Holland. They changed the name to Holland because of the scandal. Um, and he now lives in France. Right. As a Frenchman, as an Englishman, Irishman? Oh, he's English. He's yeah. a journalist. And right. he's produced the letters of Oscar Wilde and Dave Profunds. But he's living in France now, Marilyn Holland. Well, Patrick's been grandson. absolutely... I knew it would be. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating. Thanks for now, I'm going to get you to, to, to leave us with a quote. Okay. I'm going to get you through a book. But here is the book. You can see it there. Oscar Wilde. The, the world's favourite 100 quotes. You will not put this book down. Right. There's some bookmarks there the as book, well. Bookmarks. You know, and if you go to Patrick's Facebook page. Oscar Wilde Genius. Oscar Wilde Genius. So if you go to the Oscar Wilde Genius and you'll see how to contact Patrick, how to get copies of the book, copies of the DVD, the whole lot. It, they're in Trinity College, the National Gallery, yeah. the National Museum. You really are a world. <laughs> well, I'm trying. No, anyway. you're, you're succeeding. Well, not trying. you have to keep trying anyway. Oscar As would we'll be very proud. Can you Thank leave you us with a much. quote? Can you, can you quote something for us into um, the camera there? An Oscar quote. He said on his deathbed, uh, I am fighting a duel to the death with the wallpaper. One or the other of us has to go. And so do we. Patrick Walsh, Oscar Wilde. 
Watch out because we're going to we're going to bring this show to Cabin Town as well because I'd love love to see it. Great, Patrick. Thanks very very much. Thanks for very much, in. Paul. Absolute Appreciate pleasure, you. gentlemen. I know Thank you, you would be. And that's all from the green room for this week. Many thanks to Dave for helping us out this evening, and we'll be back with you again next week. Oscar. Thank you very much. That's what I'm going to call you for now. <laughs>